smoking all that bullshit. I'ma put it to you like this, yo. This is for the nerds. This is for the brainiacs. This is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back. You ain't gonna touch me. You not gonna do nothing. You are not above me. I bet you wish you was me. I know that I know. What is poppin' everybody? And welcome back to another special episode of the Only Friends Podcast. We, you know, it's me and my only friends, which includes, but is not limited to, my boy, Quapito! What's poppin' in Mexico? <laughs> 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 you, 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 like, I, think, I, think, I think poker's done, dude. I think I just need to put all my money on crypto. Wow. Yep. What, all, do you, what do you mean? Top, He's tanking. <laughs> It's, it's you could buy it at a discount, buddy. Tank sig- or buy top low. signal. Buy high, buy the dip. Yeah. He yep. waits till it gets to its highest point ever, and he's like, "I'm gonna buy Bitcoin." Yeah, but that's like ninety percent <laughs> of people. I mean, it did mm-hmm. retrace like almost fifteen percent, so <laughs> he's kind of right to buy now. Well, I did buy a nice little chunk a few months ago, so that's nice. Do okay, I- all right. What kind of chunk are we looking at here? Uh, you don't have to say numbers. I'm just saying, you know, are we talking like? A, a bad beat jackpot at the South Point, or are we talking like uh, your hourly at one three? Or like Kitty Crow's, <laughs> Kitty Crow's made, car that I've made almost was gonna buy. a quarter of a new Tesla Model Three. Oh! Wow. I wish I knew what that meant. <laughs> they made ten thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, they're forty k. Yeah. I thought they were the, cheap. The, now the, the the cheapest one you can get mm. has forty dimes. Let's go. Uh, I know cheaper. Are you trying to buy a Tesla Model 3? If everything goes the way I expect it to, then at the end of this year, I would like to trade Interesting. I know somebody who might be yeah. selling one at discount. There happens <laughs> to be a non-functioning one Correct. in our... Um... That's what you want, one that doesn't run. It's <laughs> literally yeah. been sitting there for what, 16 months now? It's, it's been a while. It's, at it's least. quite remarkable, actually. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's just, once he gets his license, he'll be able to drive it. You want to know what's, you want to know what's funny about all this? Is, Good drink. Is that um, <laughs> there was a time frame where I had to turn my lease in, and I was working on getting a new one. And during yeah. that time, Landon owned the Tesla. And rather than, you know, leasing it to me for a short period of time or something like that, he just let it collect dust and turn into a goddamn sack of rocks. Mm. And now here I am. Here you are. With a non-electric car. <clears throat> yeah. That's mucking okay. up the environment. You, you right. Fucking it up. The environment is in the muck. Is it? <laughs> I think we're doing okay. We'll be all right. We're going to make it through our generation. This car yeah. is in the muck. Just don't reproduce, kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is all for. Let's so. end it all. Wait, why? <laughs> I'm having a, a birth in the tiny house. Uh, we, uh, okay, look. If, <laughs> the tiny house. <laughs> if you're going to convert the tiny house into a birthing house, I'm not going to get the tiny house. You can um, you can convert the yeah, tent. You are. No, you can convert oh, Conrad's whoa, tent. Hell no! <laughs> I'm not the fuck out of here. That thing no way! <laughs> my baby's no gonna, way. Not gonna be born like high, high. as fuck. Yeah. Not allowed in my yeah. tent. <laughs> who's your uh, Who's your doula? Do you want to be? Are you open? Uh, I'm, you I'm getting open? certified as we speak. Okay, mm. yeah, you could be my doula. All right. I think that you would have a gentle touch. <laughs> <laughs> He's really good at swaddling the kids. Yeah. Well, you know? yeah. Well, they really do the most of like the pulling. The pulling? Out. Oh, yeah. okay. I understand. Uh huh. Yeah. I, I, I actually don't understand. I, for the life of me, don't understand how birth works. It just seems it's so It's really gnarly. Yeah. You should check it out. I'd rather not. <laughs> um, all right. We got a great show for you guys today. <clears throat> Let's get off of this birthing topic. Oh. Um, Tom Dwan is in the muck. We're going to talk mm-hmm. a little bit about that. <laughs> it's uh, not a hand, it's a person. <laughs> that's true. Ignition also mucking around. We're going to be joined by Patrick Howard and Matt Marinelli. Hey, me. Uh, sometime around 1230. And we're going to discuss what's been going on over there with the bots, with the collusion rings, and with the fact that they ghosted Landon on his final payment as an ambassador. Yeah. Wow. Give my money. Yeah, <laughs> fucking rude. Hey, <laughs> that man is money. How Name much, of, and how much shame. of a Tesla are we talking about here, Landon? <laughs> half of one. Like half. Yeah, like half oh, a Tesla. Oh, man. Plus more, right? Mm. Name no. and shame. Name <laughs> and shame. Oh, man. Is your account still locked? Uh, I have to unlock it. It's on me. Do you have money in there? Oh, it's on yeah. you. Yeah, he has like a, a significant amount of money on there. What is the matter with... All right. <laughs> Landon is a, a, I'm gonna a take Tesla a beat. human. I'm going to take a beat and I'm going to have a very hard conversation with Landon. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, I man? have that answer. A lot. Go He's on. 24 years old. Doesn't matter. No, that's not I an excuse. I disagree, man. When I was 24... 
There's, I, I was not when I was 24, like I could account for every Same. single fucking Absolutely. penny. Yeah, well, that's because you were broke. You were as rich as, as Landon is right now. That's Neither why. is Landon. Landon's yeah. paper rich. I'm paper Landon rich. has a tab mm. with me that is nearing small. S- <laughs> not small. You keep winning. <laughs> Still not small. <laughs> tab, give him the tab. <laughs> give, give him the tab. Yeah, I don't have an actual tab. It's a scam tab. A scam tab. If there were a run on the bank tomorrow and I said, Landon, give me my money, I would own a Tesla. That's how big your tab no, is. Look at it. No, like it's sitting on the it's sitting no, on the table. I could pay you. I would just have to get money from stars but and I, probably unlock your I'd ignition not, account. <laughs> Solana Solana's been doing all right. I could pay you. I don't accept Solana. I don't, right, I don't so want your shit coin. That's a personal wow. issue. Well, you, you can change it. Shit you can convert it. You can Damn. convert it. Yeah, you can convert it, buddy. I'm not. Do, I'm not here to do all your accounting. You know, there's no accounting to do. <laughs> Man. You? He can send you USDC, but it's going to be on the Solana network. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. I, I don't want anything. He can send you bonk. Yeah. <laughs> he can send bonk? you bonk. How about dog with hat? That's what you want. You want <laughs> dog with hat. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, you, you <laughs> have a hat. Cute little dog hat. hat on. The hat, hat is on. Hat. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> actually called Gatsby with hat. <laughs> okay, now I'm a little more interested. All right, yeah. now we're talking. Okay, now we got a Gatsby coin. Now we're talking. Okay. Wapo and I are going to start our own coin. It's going to be called El Tortuga. Yeah. Well, okay. I've been saying for, who would, who would for not like buy that? two uh. years that I was going to next cycle. Yeah. I, I said, I'm going to start a coin called Matt Berkey's uh, Inu Come Rocket <laughs> okay. 6920. Right. And then we'll show it to our only friends. Community. And here we are. Yes. Yeah, so buy oh, in buy and you will there's it's no, a guaranteed 100 There's X. nothing to buy, though. Uh. Well, yeah, it will. It will there It'll will moon. be. It'll you got to get in It'll early. Move. Yeah. You could get on on the ground floor. Right. The Maverky, Below the ground floor. Matt Berkey, Solana, come a uh, Inu fart, Sonic. 69 Sonic. I do not approve of <laughs> my use of likeness here. Well, you don't really have a say. So, so I have to upload 10 high quality photos to yes. your, your site. Listen, uh, I have to, to th- this goes out to all content creators out there. If you ask somebody to be a guest on anything that it is that you're doing in any sort of capacity, whether it's a live stream, a podcast, or anything of the sort, please, for the love of God, do not ask them for 10 photos of themselves. It's the most ridiculous request I've ever heard in my entire life. And what are is, they going to use 10 photos for? Just this like- is the third time in a week somebody's made this request of me. Like for a podcast, like different podcasts. One was for a podcast. One was for a live stream, and one was for something else. I don't. I don't recall. Doing that, but make them do like videos of them doing handstands well, or something. Well, I just, I don't want to do work to to be a part of something. There like, are there are plenty of uh, pictures of you on what's called the internet. They can probably pull them. From yeah. There. Yeah, like they could find ten on there. Do people Google? think I'm just sitting around taking fucking photo shoots all day? Yeah, well, you are. <laughs> yeah, I am. You on your Instagram, so we have to look at a, sel- yes. a, a shirtless picture of you every day. Hey, mute me. All right, yeah. um, <laughs> I'm just well. waiting for those abs to pop. I don't know. Me too. It's almost, <laughs> it's, we're, we're like day sixty. What's going on here? I, I'm gonna about? have to extend this one. Why I are your friend doing this to you, well, man? I, well, he's cold. not wrong. That's cold. He's really not wrong. <laughs> the the weight is coming off, but the leanness is not coming through. You, you I, I'm gonna look, have to extend this. You look like this. you're getting bigger. I'll say that. <laughs> Ironically, I'm not. You're actually getting smaller. I don't know. Yeah. The picture's a different. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, that's I, that's also true. You know what we're gonna do? Actually, you're moving into an appropriate. No more coin. We're gonna start an NFT collection of Berkey's uh, now we're self- talking. shirtless yes. pictures. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's become towel bro. I think yeah. 75 hard is going to turn into 90 miserable. The, <laughs> okay, the last... it's a 90 there PFP collection. Yeah, I think, the, I think the, the final 15 days. Am I going to get compensated for this? No. I don't want this to be like the homeless situation. No, it's the homeless situation. <laughs> oh, oh, see, that's fucked up. There's, well, you <laughs> can't you do are. anything. It's crypto. Taking, av- <laughs> taking advantage of a it's the wild west. good old boy. Yeah. You want to know what's really fucked up? What's that? We just got Scout's results back. Did we? <gasps> yep. Oh, no. Chihuahua? Scout's 30% Fuck, Chihuahua. I knew, I knew it. it. <laughs> I knew it. That's why her bark sucks so much. Yeah, I was I was sure of it. It's her underbite. Her underbite, and, like, always oh, makes she, like, so she, much like, sense now. She, like, is kind of, like, shaky and yeah. freaky. Like, oh, my God. It makes so much a, sense now. How did a pit bull mate with a Chihuahua? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds not How? Funny. You're like, a Chihuahua owner. Which one is the mother? 30% it has to be the pit bull, right? Is it, right? Is it 70% pit bulls or other anything else in there? <laughs> she's uh, probably not even pit bull. She's just like a bunch of random stuff. No, I, I'm very confident. Corey, Corey just said you can only be sad if she's 31% or more and she's 30. <laughs> uh, hopefully he sends the rest. But yeah, I, oh I'm, I'm pretty God. confident. Gatsby is a good boy. He's 100% <laughs> He's American pit bull. Yeah, how do you- <laughs> he can say the N word. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
<laughs> it's 100 percent purebred. Okay. Man, can say right. N word. Uh, <laughs> Wait, but you're not purebred. Uh, that's different. <laughs> what is different? What is you're different? Half Your attitude is different. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, granted, it is a it is just pitbull, but it is kind of surprising to be a purebred dog from the yeah, shelter. It is. You know, adopt don't shop. You heard it here. He's Where did you boy. find him? The shelter. Wow, she's only twenty five percent pitbull. What's hey, the rest? What's the rest? <laughs> Demon live DNA results here like on the Russell. Only Friends podcast. I thought uh, so. Jack I Russell. thought she was going to be pit Jack Russell. We need to pull up a picture of yeah. Scout. For but, we gotta get but that was copium because I knew, like deep down in my heart, that she was pit Chihuahua. But I was like, it could be Jack Russell. I didn't, I, oh wait, wait. I here's the final results. So. Uh, Berkey, you are not the father. Yeah, that's, that's very clear. <laughs> That's Corey is the father. <laughs> it's so, Corey is the father. It's so funny because when we adopted her uh, as like, you know, a little puppy, she just looked like a pure pit. And we were like looking at, you know, how you get dogs. You're like, oh, look at the paws. She's going to be so, We were positive she, she was going to be huge. bigger than Gatsby. Yeah. And oh, he's really? 70 pounds. Yeah. I was positive she was going to outgrow him. Like it was just she's so clear. She had she, like. But she's dense. Like she's kind of heavy. Yeah. She's, she's muscular. She's very small and 35 pounds. Yeah, she's so she's jacked. half his size. But uh, yeah, and then she just like stopped growing it a year in. And I was like, oh no, we, we have a chihuahua. <laughs> oh man, I'm trying to find a picture yeah, of her. A what a girl. disappointment. That bark is so 100% bark chihuahua. It's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah, it's, it's the worst. It is bad. I mean, Rudy's is life. bad too, though. I We're, walked her today. Rudy's we, just relentless. <laughs> he just doesn't stop. He He's a herder that's clear yeah she is an alarm system i walked her today for i walked her with gatsby for a mile and a half and i would say she barked for 90 yeah. percent of the walks. Tr- I, I was like oh i'll take the dogs for a relaxing walk one day and then it was like the opposite because scout is just like <laughs> screeching the whole time it's like this is not relaxing 21 percent boxer okay that okay. makes sense too okay she's got a little g in her yeah she's three percent bulldog <laughs> What does it even mean? That's How can attitude. you be so many percentages? That's the attitude. Well, what happened was... What it happened what was... I, I assume it was her mother. But her mother was probably part pit, part boxer, yeah. part bulldog. And then the the father was probably part spaniel, part chihuahua, part super mutt, yeah, whatever the fuck like that mutt, is. But two mutts bred. We, yeah. We got a picture scout. coming for you guys. You're about to see the prettiest girl. dog. It, it, She's this not... Yeah. She's <laughs> so pretty. She's not. It's a face only a father could love. You're Aww. out of your mind. You are that's, Rudy. That's Rudy's Rudy's Rudy. Rudy's that's not her so father. <laughs> Rudy is disgusting. Rudy is so handsome. <laughs> I think all the dogs are very beautiful dogs. Look at that. Aww, look Aww. at her. She's such a baby. Give yeah. it to your face. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to find a good one. I couldn't get it. <laughs> there's that's, look there's a, literally a hundred of them on my Instagram. Oh yeah, I didn't go there. Come on, man. I was going to my own photos. <laughs> one exceptional not, dog. Not your dog. Uh, speaking of new dogs, I'm going to have one in one month after after the WPT cruise that we're all going on. My Named sister's... Harper. Nope. nope. <laughs> what, that won every poll. I know. So what's the point of the poll? What was the point of the poll? I was then? just curious. <laughs> 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 it can't be Harper There's a poll. I, yeah. I will have a Harper in the future. She's just... Th- this one's not Harper. It looks like a Harper. I think no, so. No. It, Harper's too tame for this one. Harper's she's, a, she's got a some spunk. Too. She's got some spunk to her. We're gonna cu- we're gonna call her Pip. Do we no. have Do we have a picture? Yeah, it's in my uh, it's in my Twitter thread. If it's kind of Guapa Pip it. short for something, it's just oh, Pip. it's like the poker thing. Pip squeak. It's not the poker thing. Pip squeak. It's not <laughs> where squeak. Oh, poker I, that's what I thought. Thing. He's like, I oh, thought you meant like Pip. Pip. It's that... the main character <laughs> in Great Expectations. Oh my god! No, 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 is that oh, where Finnegan came from? Like Finn? Finn, Finn yeah. was the movie version oh. of you the same character. Like fiction books. I love Great Expectations. It's one only, of my favorite books I only named my dogs after characters in novels. It didn't start that it's way. Like it just novels. ended that way. <laughs> now you uh, can't stop. Yeah, now you can't stop. We Wait, have a whisper, theme. Whisper. Why are we whispering? <laughs> I just oh. It's from the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got it. I, got I just it. don't like it. I like That's, Harper so much more. That makes me like Pippi more. One Pip. Pip sucks. You're the only pip, one. Pip squeak. You know pip, how long yeah. it took me to realize that it was actually a poker thing? I, that's the f- I thought you were doing like a lame poker thing. And no. I was like, oh. <laughs> no, but I will say that everybody who answered in thread has a lot of bad, bad ideas. They're like, name her Ace. Name him King. Name him. Uh, Nobody wants to name him Ace Binks. or King or Binks. No. <laughs> D- Doug's dog name is Binks. Actually. Of course it is. It's like the it's like Lamana whenever we first started playing poker, he had like a half dozen T shirts that were like poker the shirts. king and queen. Or the poker tattoos. Honestly, you should just name him Doug. 
<laughs> Maybe Nicole. <laughs> Doug is a Aww, great man. Oh, the look wrinkly at that. forehead. I feel oh, like gosh. she's gonna look like Gatsby kind so of. Good girl. So she's half. Uh, that was like Harper. Rottweiler. Half Rottweiler, <laughs> half Pitbull. Oh, it's, it's a girl. We can just call her Harper. Harper's. There's no nickname for Harper either. You don't see many Pitbull. I mean, um, um, Rottweilers anymore. I don't uh, ever see them. Yeah, so my friend back home has one. <laughs> Gatsby's new name is Biden, so we really make yeah, up names. Yeah, the, the nickname doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be short for anything because, like, I call Scout Mentality, and Gatsby <laughs> is Biden. Why is he Biden? Because he's old and he doesn't know where he is. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, looks into the abyss, looks yeah. in the yonder. Oh, oh. He knows exactly oh, where he is. Uh, Shut your mouth. He's on a nice pasture. <laughs> is that the one that barks at the air? Yeah, he does not he bark at the air. Oh, oh, oh. He, <laughs> he's unlocked another dimension in his own age. Oh, yeah. He okay. definitely is and living he knows, in another dimension. Yeah, he knows that there are things among us dementia. that we can't see, so yeah. he barks he's at them to scare them dementia. off. He's living in dementia. Is the dimension he's in. <laughs> dementia mention. I don't know what you're talking about. So Pip is going to be joining us after the WSOP, or sorry, after the WPT cruise. Uh, pod dog? Huh? Pod dog? She will definitely be a pod <gasps> dog for like the first the six months at Why least. Why can't we bring on the other? We can't bring the other ones because they're just. They've been oh, on. They're gonna wreck my set. Well, it's more on. that they don't need to come, <laughs> and they're very happy at home. But like for her, I don't want to leave her alone like while she's Rudy still a puppy. Came on because you guys were saying he was a demon and he was. He's a, a demon. Perfect angel. He was on not camera. a perfect angel. <laughs> on camera, he was. He was a nightmare. He was sitting next to me, and everyone was like, "Oh, what are they talking about? Rudy's so sweet. <laughs> He's so sweet." Your dog needs. Discipline training. I'm not a disciplinarian, okay? <laughs> that's, that's abundantly clear. <laughs> Your dog needs fucking rehab. Yeah, this he's, a, he's fucking, addicted to food. Yeah, He's just on the counter at all yeah, times. Yeah, well, he likes food. I mean, butter bandit. What can I say? Butter that bandit. That thing is so crazy. The crumble, the crumble <laughs> cookie bandit. He'll eat whatever. He anything. literally eats anything. There Potential was a, fire starter. Anything. I was sitting Trash. in the living room the other day, and I just heard something, and I was like, uh, I was doing something. So I was like, uh, whatever. I don't know what that was. Then I turn around like a minute later. I was like, wait, this motherfucker. And I just see a crumble box on the floor. And yeah. he just, he, he actually went upstairs, came back downstairs, grabbed the empty crumble box <laughs> and started to bring it upstairs. Yeah, he brings it upstairs. I was like, fucking He's psychopath. So, he, he always <laughs> brings so every, funny. He always brings everything upstairs to his little spot. And then <laughs> he doesn't eat it downstairs. He'll carry it up and then open it there. There was legitimately a half dozen cookies in there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I ate probably two. So he no, had he had three cookies. I watched it. Yeah, so like I, I mean, I saw it right before. Right. That's okay. He had the cookie donut. He used to be so skinny. Yeah, he's definitely gained weight. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's, huge. he's fat. You're gonna have to start walking him. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, I tried it before. It's not. It's not a fun task. He puts a rock in his mouth. The first 30 <laughs> steps out of the scout, and it's like you're going deaf. Like he's quiet. I wear headphones. <laughs> She, th I will tell you this. No headphones. Can there stop are a remarkable scout. amount of dogs in our neighborhood, and she knows where each and every fucking one of them lives. We walk up, we get within 10 yards of a house that has a dog, and she is barking. She is on alert. Yeah, I hear it from the house. <laughs> yeah. When you take her on the walk, I can hear her from the house. She woofing. Yeah. There's not a part of your walk that we don't hear her yeah. from. <laughs> it's just constant. I walk a mile and a half away. And we no, hear we it. we hear it. <laughs> Scout spark reaches miles. Oh, man. Well, maybe she can be the town crier for people who are lending money to certain someone. Uh, this, I guess, is your PSA. lot of accusations coming out against Tom Dwan. This goes to prove never meet your heroes. Cue the picture uh, of him winning the Triton tournament. <laughs> wins the Triton tournament. Oh, my tournament. God, that face. <laughs> well, so the, the, the latest updates are obviously the Peter Jet one. Uh, where we had spoken about this maybe a week ago or so. Peter said that the update is that Tom sent him about 30K, but things aren't looking good. One of the most recent convos went something like this. He says, I'll pay the remaining balance at Jeju. Uh, Peter replies, no, I don't believe you. He says, if I don't, I'll add 25K on top. Which, by the way, what a <laughs> what a bad tactic. Like, this is a Dustin you. the Closer type of yeah, tactic. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. I know I owe you a pile of money, but if I don't pay you by this date, I'll just tack more on. It's, it's like... like imaginary money <laughs> right it's just like if you're so freely just throwing large sums of money on top of what you already owe you probably just don't have it to pay yeah you're probably not gonna pay uh, we're just so trying then, to win another tournament right so then peter says he switches gears and says he doesn't owe the full amount and that he's a liar slash scum this is after four years of saying he'd pay the full amount soon he was always civil and i was giving him more time uh but when i put my foot down he changed tactics completely i've never dealt with somebody this unethical uh, to lean into this a little bit further for what it's worth, I also found out that Tom was the one who sent the recording to Vertucci. 
because he was playing criminal mastermind oh, trying God. to get to the oh, bottom I of things. I thought that was someone else. Deeb was the only person who <laughs> had a copy of it who shared it with Tur Durr. Oh, okay. Durr then sent it to Vertucci. Yeah, because... that was weird. He was like like tweaking on that that uh, J4. He thing. looked like he was on meth. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a bad look for Tom. Um, but what's what's funnier about this is Haralabob then came forward, which I guess he kind of sort of came forward five yeah. or six years ago, but didn't really name names. Um in this instance, though, he's not being shy about it. Basically said that at one point, Durr was working on a free roll to be a beard for him. He was getting bets down versus a bookmaker for very large sums, and they'd won high seven figures. Um, but that Durr uh, still owes him 350 k and the only reason he was even paid a large chunk of the seven figures he was owed was because somebody else uh, that was, I guess, uh, formerly a beard for Harala Bob, owed Durr a bunch of money. Mm. And so he paid off that aspect of it. Now, what's funny about this <clears throat> is that they played the million dollar, or maybe they didn't play the million dollar game together. Maybe Harala Bob was just watching it. No, yeah. he played it, didn't he? Did he play? I, I honestly don't I remember. So. He played the ACL million dollar game, I'm pretty sure. I really don't remember. I don't remember either. I'm pretty sure he did. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But anyway, um, Harald Bob says, Tom does not dispute the debt. He knows he's responsible for it. And our last conversation was after the HTL million dollar match. Uh, so I don't think he played it. I think he probably just hit him up afterwards, which we know Durr was one of the biggest winners. I think he won, what, 1.7-ish, something like that. Maybe mm. more, maybe 3 million. I don't he remember. He won a pile, though. Um, and uh, Haralbub said, like, you know, I just requested that he pays me a small monthly amount, at which point he ghosted. Uh, there's a lot more to the story, basically. Um, what does it mean to, uh, to be a beard? It means that you are, well, put, in, in the sports betting world or in general? <laughs> the gay man's oh, wife. The, I know one of them. Okay. The one I'm asking you about. I okay, so in the sports betting world, it means you're a non-sharp <laughs> betting for a sharp. Okay. So you're basically you're uh, Sean Perry. Hoorah! Yeah, Sean Hoorah. Perry's definitely bearding for somebody. Harala Bob was in that game. Was he? Yep, he was sitting right next to him. Okay, that's oh, even that's better. Awkward. He's literally sitting to the left of Tom. That's, yeah, that's why he said imagine winning a... That's why he said imagine winning a 3.1 million pot right in front of you and... And just then, like swiping and then it over to make yeah, payments. $30,000 slid it right over. I would have reached over and grabbed that shit. Well... I mean, obviously, I think everybody understands that Durr's not wealthy, like, or at least not overly wealthy, given all the debts that he owes. It right. seems as though he can't pay them. Maybe he's paper rich. I don't know that that's true. I mean, like, my point that I'm getting at is, like, when he's playing that million dollar game, it's very clear that's not all his yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think outside of, like, maybe Robo and I don't know, I don't even know who else I could name in poker that would be playing a million dollar game and have 100% of themselves. It's literally just like yeah. Robo. Yeah. I Hopefully think it's just Robo. Yeah. It's just Robo. Well, just I mean, yeah, like, like professionals. Yeah, yeah, yeah and racks. So. Yeah, I guess, I guess Airball probably has all of himself. You know, investment banking's been good. <laughs> he didn't have all of himself versus you, so... <laughs> he did not have all of himself versus me in spite of all the claims. I wonder who had it. I know who had it. Yeah, we, we all know. Had it. He sold 40% of the HCL guys. Like Feldman, all those guys. They, they all got wrecked. Mars had a big piece, didn't he? Uh, Mars said, probably had a bit. Well, he came out I, and said it. I would, I would bet that he sold more than forty percent. But right. Feldman told Brent that, uh, or told no, maybe it wasn't Brent. But he told somebody that they all had a piece. Yeah, Mar I'm pretty sure Mars came out and said uh, that whole thing that he had a big piece. Of and then, yeah, and then like I have other friends that are like within that crew, and they were all a part of the group chat. Well, while if, you're, <laughs> if, you're, if you're gonna get to play on hustle anymore, might as well do it this way, right? This is the next best thing. Yeah. Yeah, you just get to indirectly. You have to keep some giving. Yeah, indirectly take money. Next is uh, hopefully, hopefully they all have a piece of JBEX. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another, I'm just gonna get in there and I'm gonna take them a hundred k at a time, baby. <laughs> I hope there away. was a little blank check band money in there too. Uh, there definitely, oh, yes. yeah. definitely was. He showed up to support his boy very for, hard for sure. That's why he was sweating. For sure, I got some blank check band money, he and for that. sure, a lot of side betters got blank check band money. Like we love blank check. I'm very money. confident that whoever Lynn was shilling for to fill all that action was not herself. Shout out to BCB. Shout out to BCB. BCB. Shout out to the, uh, he disappeared, huh? Who? Uh, oh, yeah, he made yeah. a website about how he's not a scammer, and then and then just <laughs> vanished. <laughs> he's he's in mobile homes. He website made a fun. website. <laughs> it was like funny, like buying a domain to be like, I am not a scammer. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of weird shit going on mm -hmm. in that yeah. whole thing. Um, I'm glad it's all over. Are you though? 
Yeah. Do you I think it's over? Yeah. It's I, not. No, no, but right now it I is, and I'm very happy with that, about that. Yeah, for the time being, I suppose. So uh, I don't imagine anything's ever over. Like, the thing is, like, obviously we mean we have a good time about it, but the truth of the matter is, like, for, especially for this show, we're super thankful for HCL. But yeah, uh, it's not even just that. Like, I think the poker world as a whole should be thankful for it because a big, a big driving aspect to getting those lineups together is, you know, people who are kind of on the fringe are willing to put themselves out there in public in the public eye mm -hmm. and usually what that's going to do is just like suss out a lot of bad behavior you yeah. know if you if you put yourself on camera 100 or 200 hours a year with a bunch of you know potential dirty money or whatever at some point somebody's going to talk you know at some point someone's going to be like hey I think this guy's cheating. Talking about mm -hmm. dirty money, was Bally's fucking running background checks on everybody? What, what type Dude. of paperwork are they signing? Did they sign their life over? It wasn't easy. <laughs> it was not easy. But that's good. They're, I, I think they're operating with like a pretty strong KYC. We want dirty uh, money. What do you mean? Well, as the players, sure. <laughs> but like, what are you talking about? As we had to control, like... Uh, Eric Hicks was talking about what it took to wire in there, uh -huh. and they basically like did a full background check oh on my him. God. Like he's like, I'm not doing it because like they wanted to know like you know, <laughs> basically a lot of personal things. He said it felt like I was filling out a job application. Oh. But you know that's that's good. They're compliant. They're uh, they're going through a lot of KYC. Um, while we're on the topic of you know Knowing scrupulous behavior and KYC. <laughs> Let's get into this ignition uh, accusation. So yes, uh, yesterday, Patrick Howard put a thread up um, that was a follow-up to a previous thread where he was uh, basically demonstrating how there has been a lot of collusion on, uh, on ignition, which to my knowledge, I believe is the last remaining of the anonymous sites, um, making a lot of this a little bit more possible. Now, I think what part of what they do in order to uh, prevent or allow, I guess, the community to suss it out is they provide you a day later with uh, whole or um, cards up hand histories. Uh, and I think that that's how some of this was, was ultimately uh, divulged as being a collusion ring. Also, there's a lot of demonstrations of the bots malfunctioning. Um, so we're going to discuss that as well as uh, a follow-up to the GG with both him and Matt Marinelli. Uh, I see we have Matt here. Do you want to accept Patrick there, uh, Guap? You want to admit him? <laughs> he's been admitted. <laughs> so... All right, he's been admitted. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, welcome, boys. Patrick, let's, uh, let's start with you first and foremost. What was the impetus of this tweet? And uh, I guess, how long have you been working on gathering all this data? You're muted right now. Can you there hear you now? go. Yeah, we got you. Okay, cool. It was brought to my attention um, late last year, and it kind of flew under the radar for me because I don't really have any students right now um, below 2K now on Bavada. There were a couple of 2K now, and that was it. And I think that stake was a little bit safer. But I started hearing from a lot of people that their results were suffering at mid stakes and multiple stables told me that they had seen like a major drop in results. So then I started doing some database reviews for people and the stats that I was seeing on Bavada just looked really weird. Like the pool was just playing very differently from how I had seen any other pool play. And there were some signs that indicated like bot behavior to me, like they were playing similar to how I had seen bots play on ACR and we, you know, we were dealing with ACR bot issue at the same time. So I figured if it's happening on ACR, it's happening on ignition too. Then I started to play a little bit, uh, and I hadn't played mid stakes on Bavada in a long time. And I just very quickly realized that like something is really wrong with these games. Um, you know, like way too many hands going multi-way to the flop and a lot of like reg type players taking very weird lines um sort of like non-human lines and again lines that i'd seen the acr bots take so back in january i made the first big post about this because it was clear that ignition wasn't refunding anybody like anytime someone would send over a blatant collusion spot they would just kind of 
respond with like a, a basic email and then nothing would happen. And it seemed like Ignition was going to do something after my first post because they responded to it. But, you know, we're here like two months later and um, it doesn't seem like the situation has changed very much. So we compiled a bunch of evidence and, uh, you know, tons of collusion hand histories and evidence of malfunctioning bots on the site. And I just put that out uh, yesterday. So that's where we are today. Okay, so uh, I guess in order to to make this a little bit more uh, clear for the for the audience, um, are, are we talking about two separate problems here with a collusion, a potential collusion ring, and then a potential bot ring, or is it kind of one and the same where you suspect that the people who are botting are also the people that are colluding? I think it's probably both. Um, I could be wrong about it, but there are some ways that you can identify bots at the table and it seems like you know those indicators are showing up in the hand histories where we're seeing collusion happen um and i don't think it's a stretch to say that you know if you have all these people who are cheating on the site that that they'd also be the ones who are colluding right Okay, so that makes sense. Uh, walk me through a little bit of um, the the video where the bots are timing out, or not timing out, sorry, uh, where they have uh, a zero VPIP or whatever. They're, they're just not playing any hands. Uh, how common is this, and how much of a part of the ACR bot ring was uh, this sort of like data collection and seeing them malfunction? It's not super common, but, you know, I've had, several people in my network reach out to me and show me this. So like, it only happens every once in a while, but if you know a lot of people, you'll, um, you know, you'll know people who have seen it happen for sure. I think what happens is something in their software glitches, like maybe they try to look up a spot, um, because they are using like a sort of RTA mm -hmm. lookup type system, I think. And, uh, you know, maybe some weird spot, like, crashes their their software or something and and uh it's going to stay that way until you know whatever operator is there to to reboot it so what you'll see is that these accounts don't time out or disconnect or sit out or anything they'll just continue playing sometimes for over 100 hands and they'll just time down to the same you know amount of time every single action before folding so it's not super common, but it is a good, it's kind of like a telltale sign that you're dealing with a, a robot. That not video a human. did come from the ACR investigation though, because I was collecting as much info as I could. And uh, people were sharing, you know, video and evidence of ACR bots malfunctioning. And someone basically sent that video and said, hey, look at this. Same exact thing is happening on Ignition the same way. Um, so we didn't release it at the same time because we didn't want to confuse the message and just focus on ACR in that moment. But right. we also knew that this was going to be uh, something to address down the line. While we're on the topic of botting, before we get into a little bit more of the collusion ring stuff, Matt, can you give us a bit of an update as far as uh, what you've heard at ACR? I know that they did a small batch of refunds. Is there any public knowledge as far as like how much that was, who was affected, if they're going to do another round? Uh, are we anywhere near that 10 million mark that, that they had claimed? Well, at the moment, uh, as far as I know, they haven't stated how much they've refunded and they haven't mentioned any plans to the pros that they're going to, basically, they're not going to tell us as far as I can tell. Maybe at some point, once mm -hmm. they get, it's it's kind of ambiguous and we're a little bit in the dark. So whatever public relations messages have been put out, I guess anyone could could look that up, but I think just common sense would tell you that if they refunded an amount that they were proud of, that they would have mentioned it. So um, I don't think we're even remotely close to the $10 million mark. Um, but I mean, the good news is that the ACR reps have been communicating more uh, with the players. They're in the Discord now, along with you, the anti-RTA Discord. Okay. And there is a line of communication, and they have said that there will be more um, waves of refunds over time um there were also new bots that allegedly uh came back onto wpn and they told us that they froze those accounts as soon as they got on there which is very important because one thing we mentioned last time 
Is that a really critical way to make sure that these bot farms stay uh, banned is to keep banning them because they're going to come back wave after wave. So you need to be persistent in, in continuing to ban them. Um, so I guess to give them credit, they did say that they froze the new accounts. So hopefully they can be persistent. I would love to see a little bit more transparency. I, I don't expect necessarily ACR to tell us about every ban and every refund that happens, but I think that this was such a special case and it was so public that it would be very smart for them to be a little bit uh, more forthright with the players. But it's still an ongoing, it's still an ongoing story. Yeah, and I, I hope the community kind of understands how important you guys uh, and that entire community of high stakes guys in the Discord that are <clears throat> are diligently policing this, how important you guys are to to this process because you know it really is a squeaky wheel gets the grease type of thing. Uh, I don't imagine operators care all that much if it goes undetected. Um, I, I guess Patrick, uh, help us out a little bit here with demonstrating the collu collusion. I, I went through the thread of 20 some hands that you posted as evidence and to the naked eye, I'm not so sure that anything really jumps out. Like obviously I understand where you're coming from uh, as a big time data analyst who spends a lot of time coming through the numbers and has seen millions of spots. Um, but for the viewers at home who are just kind of looking at this and seeing a multi-way pot where uh, somebody bluffs or what appears to be a bluff, uh, maybe maybe help us understand in in lay terms uh why these are such obvious collusion spots i mean it's just extremely rare to see like even one hand like that where it goes so it, it might be a little bit less obvious to people who play live because live you get a lot more multi-way pots where people kind of splash yeah. around but especially online and when you're dealing with regulars it's just so rare you could look at a database of millions of hands and maybe find one of these spots where you get a freeway spot on the river where a guy bats and you call and then another guy behind you jams um and especially when you have players calling on prior streets with nothing um so it's just it really is so rare for these types of spots these, and that's why we we posted these river spots because they're so uncommon where you have three players just raising and re-raising um, and then when you have 20 plus examples like i posted in that thread then you can be pretty sure that something fishy is going on yeah I, I think that that's maybe the translation that everybody can understand when we were going through the the possible uh data many many years ago which is kind of resurfacing now it wasn't just the win rate and things of that nature that jumped out to us. It was for, for the shark people, it was his river efficiency. He was almost perfect in making river decisions. And that's just something you can't really do without having some sort of methodology of, of cheating, whether it's colluding with another person or whether it's having actually real time information and seeing what's going on when you're playing on a live stream. Um, you know, rivers aren't, aren't that cut and dry. So uh, I, I guess for like the audience at home, one of the most clear examples, I think, is the first hand that you posted, the six deuce suited, five seven suited, and pocket queens, where you know it's a three way three bet pot, where somehow six deuce of clubs is in there from middle position, uh, five seven of diamonds is in from the cutoff, and like these hands don't, you know, to to double down on Patrick's point, these hands don't ever v pip anyway from these positions in an online arena outside of maybe like penny stakes. Um, so to somehow see this happen in a three way pot where ultimately six deuce of clubs ends up bluffing on a king jack jack xx board texture uh getting queens to fold is just kind of a clear indicator i think that there's some level of collusion taking place here uh some attempt to squeeze the best hand out of the pot and uh i think this hand is also very illuminating because it's part of the the hands up replay where ignition provides you hand histories with all hole cards right yep um, were you able to find any, any more of those where you had like full disclosure? Uh, I know just like briefly scanning through, it's not always obvious which ones, uh, have all the whole cards. Um, yeah, there's a lot of evidence, like for every one of these hands that I posted on Twitter, there are 
obviously many more happening that we don't know about, but even, you know, collusion spots that we know about, I would say there's 10 times as many minor collusion spots. These were like the most blatant ones where you have all ends on the river. And that's right. why I decided to post them because I thought it would be the, the easiest for the community to see. But there's just so many examples. If you look back through your sessions with whole cards exposed where you're in the big blind and you know the button raises and the small blind calls with a hand that is too weak to play and you know any reg knows that and then you end up getting forced out of a small pot you know multi-way on and it doesn't go all yeah. in but you're still getting teamed up against and losing a little bit of the time that way maybe it would be simple to just explain it as like it could it doesn't need to be as dramatic it could be a three-way pot someone see bets you're, there's another play left to act and you just fold not some huge thing, but if the other, if they're each cheating and you're sandwiched in between, you're right. folding, thinking I'm in a three-way pot. I need to defend stronger, and but that could that could add big blinds to your win rate. That's a lot of money over time. Yeah, I, I think for the live player, especially, that's the easiest way to understand it. There's always a fear of two people working together and you just getting squeezed out of pots uh, through like some egregious action. Um, I guess this question is for both of you guys, but what? what do we hope to come of this like what are the next steps are you in contact with ignition uh do they have any reps that are willing to reach out similar to what acr and gg have done in the past well my my hope is that they'll contact us they if they contacted pat previously then they have the capacity to do so they must be monitoring social media so my hope that what will come from this is that ignition will contact us and maybe we can get a representative in the anti-rta chat and get something going here because they haven't acknowledged anything yet. And I think with all the criticism that, you know, we've levied at ACR, they at least have acknowledged it and um, they've tried to do something about it. Whereas with ignition, we've heard crickets so far and that needs to change. Yeah. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I, I know that, I'd love to have you guys on here in a more positive light at some point. Like, <laughs> I don't want you guys to just be the data experts who are pointing out cheating. Uh, to that end, uh, you know, to kind of shift this a little bit, do you guys still feel like online is a viable way to make an income? Um, you know, is this occurring both at cash and MTTs? Are there better alternatives? What, what do you guys foresee is the, the short-term um, future of online? Matt, why don't you go ahead? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's definitely more difficult for small stakes where the rake is a lot higher, so it puts more of a squeeze on you. And I think at high stakes, it can be a little bit easier where the community is smaller. You'd kind of have a sense of who's cheating and who isn't, um, just because everyone's accounted for. I, I think one of my motivations for getting involved uh, with this, with Ignition, is that I came up in 2018, basically, in Poker Detox, and I played 25 NL on Ignition and submitted the sample. They gave me a stake to play 100 NL, and within nine months, I was playing 1020. And I just have a hard time feeling confident that that could happen as easily now because if I tried to do that today, I'd be playing up against you know two bots at every table at every limit, and it would be a lot more difficult. And I really want to believe that you know we can have this poker dream uh, to maintain. It's really important to me. I mean, I think everyone kind of empathizes and with that guy that is working the job and wants to play poker for a living and for that to be a viable avenue. And if you don't have access to GG poker, like we don't in the United States, your options are limited. And ignition poker is a really important resource for anyone in the United States that wants to make a living in this game, especially if you don't live in a state that has regulated poker. Is the solution then to like hire out within the community for some sort of consultant? I mean, I know we saw Nanunoku kind of play this role at one point with ACR, debatable how effective he was there, but you know, clearly, uh, and I, I could say this as an outsider kind of looking in as a part of that high, high stakes Discord chat, it's very clear that you guys are well organized and have a really strong understanding both how a up and up landscape looks as well as how to kind of suss out the things that uh, may not necessarily stick out like a sore thumb to the to the naked eye. Is that something that like either of you would be interested in kind of throwing your hat in the arena for, or at least pushing more towards uh, putting pressure on sites to, to hire from, from within? 
I mean, they can get this information for free and, you know, like it's not, they don't necessarily need to hire people in the community because if anything, the community is starving for these reps to just come in and speak with us. Cause like, we have a pretty good idea of the cheating that's happening and we can make st statistical cases to prove it. Um, I think the issue is just that there's a huge disconnect, like the players, especially in that anti RTA community are just a lot more knowledgeable, I think, than the average analyst at a, a security team, especially for like an unregulated smallish site. So I think personally, I think they should just defer to us and, and listen to us, but I can see how, um, you know, if, if they're not following these situations closely enough, they just might not know who to listen to. Yeah. I, I get the sense that once you fall off from the major sites of like GG, ACR, stars, uh, they don't have much of a finger on the pulse of the community. I think we kind of saw this with Global Poker whenever so much information was presented to them uh, about the Project Baby um, RTA account and they just refused to take action. From what I understand, they've kind of corrected course and they've hired GTO Wizard as a consult. I don't know if that's moving things in the right direction or not. Uh, I'm not personally very privy to what the, the solution is to, to this. Um, you know, I, I just haven't seen all of the data the way that you guys have. I can't analyze it to the degree that you guys can. So I just wonder like why there isn't a greater level of importance placed upon, uh, I, I, like the fact that you guys are offering this for free, I guess, is the thing that that is insane to me, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, these security teams should be, seven figure assets to these companies at a minimum and to have somebody go out there and do all the hard work for them for free it seems like you want to be really tapped in there and just like basically rolling out the red carpet for you guys to continue to send uh all the information their way but best i can tell you, you're kind of getting the cold shoulder and i hope that this will help leverage uh a little bit of the community against ignition to get them to at least speak out maybe prevent people from playing in uh cheated pools or at least have them scrutinize their database a little bit more closely to make sure. Um, I guess my final question then regarding Ignition is, do you think the fact that it's an, uh, the last remaining anonymous site is furthering the ease for this level of collusion and, and botting, or do you think it just doesn't really matter? I think it's making it easier for them, yeah, because um, there were bots on ACR, but they weren't. There, there was nothing like to this level of just blatant collusion happening. So I do think that they are using the anonymous aspect of the site to their advantage um, because you just it's just so much harder to gather data when you don't have player IDs and you can't tie the same behavior to the same accounts over and over again. Yeah, I imagine it's a lot tougher to counter in-game as well. Mm -hmm. It is for sure. It's just, it's not something, <clears throat> it's not something that should exist in 2024, I don't think. With the, just the state of online poker, we need more transparency and more data to be able to police it, especially when we have a poker site that just doesn't seem that interested in security to begin with. It's just begging uh, for a problem. And I know it was implemented with the best of intentions to protect recreational players, which I'm fine with, but it's not 2013 anymore. I think we have to take a different approach to the state of the game. Yeah, I think that's very well said. Um, anything else you guys want to leave us on before we get out of here? Well, uh, I hope I, that we like, at minimum, raise some awareness around the issue and can you know help some people avoid getting cheated on these sites and. Um, you know, best case scenario, Ignition actually listens to the community and gives this problem the attention that it deserves. Um, I think that's possible. I don't see why it wouldn't be possible. I, I think they have uh, a long history of, you know, operating one of the best sites to play in the U.S. for cash games. And I don't see why they wouldn't want to continue doing that. Um, so I think, you know, one thing they have shown that these sites do care about 
PR and they've they've shown that they do care when the community speaks out. So hopefully they will respond to this. Yeah, and I was going to say that um, just also keep in mind that even though there are a lot of bot accounts, we strongly outnumber them because there could be one guy running a thousand bots, but there's way, way more people that want to play poker legitimately and love this game. So we speak up, we completely outnumber them. We can kind of take Ignition Poker back, I think would be major um, for making, becoming an online poker pro more viable starting from the bottom in the United States. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a really good point, like that it's not necessarily that everyone is cheating online. In fact, I would say it's probably the opposite. Um, of course, you know, if there's an opportunity to cheat, people will do it. But I think this is more a case of like, a few bad actors who have been able to, you know, multiply as a result of poor security. And if we can crack down on them, uh, it's possible things could go back to normal pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, it's the ability to scale that is obviously the biggest problem. Whenever there are uh, flaws in your security to the degree where somebody can kind of just come in with an operation and scale it pretty rapidly, then it does become an issue where if the everyday player who's trying to be on the up and up doesn't stop uh, frequenting those pools, they're all just going to lose their money to a single source. Um, all right. I, I think that that is probably a good place to stick a pin in this conversation. I appreciate both of you guys coming on as always. Uh, let's, you know, continue to remain in touch. Uh, I'd love to do a follow-up on this to find out if you guys hear anything from Ignition, if the games get cleaned up at all. Um, I think you've both been pretty excellent about pointing out the flaws as well as pointing out whenever these sites do take some sort of corrective action. Uh, Matt, I'd like to follow up also with the, the ACR thing sometime soon. Um, you know, I'm always kind of lurking in that chat. So whenever you guys uh, are ready to come forward and, and make another statement, I'd love to have you, Patrick, uh, Pads, whoever else on to discuss it. Uh, in the meantime, um, you know, everybody out there, just uh, be be a little cautious, you know, uh, listen up to whenever smart people like Matt and Patrick have something to say with regards to these sites. Uh, thanks, boys. We'll we'll see you guys soon. Sounds good. Thanks. Yep, bye bye. All right. Doesn't look good, kid. If if there's a few, only a few running, I know one of them because he used to talk about it all the time when we were playing two five. Like he would be just like I would like overhear him talking about like the bots he's running on ignition. I know his name. Oh shit. <laughs> Whoa. Like, name and shame. Name deep. and shame. He name and shame. Deep in one of the the win <laughs> tournaments. Yeah, he used to, I used to play two five with him all the time. I mean, maybe it's worth uh, just discussing with them behind the yeah, scenes before you name. just like publicly no, out I'm somebody. No, I'm not going to say oh, his name. I'll, oh, I'll, we'll do it. I'm not scared. I'll send them his name. <laughs> good, yeah. I, I think that that's good because I, I think Patrick's point is, and also Matt's, is very important in the sense that if it's one of those things where you just have a small collection of people who are running hordes of bots, yeah. what ends up happening is like, let's say, you know, let's be very liberal and say a quarter of the player pool is bots, but it's only run by a dozen people mm -hmm. now all of a sudden it's like it, it, it takes banding together the other 75 percent of the pool and saying like let's all sit out for a day and see who's left yeah right actually yeah because like this is the only way to identify very mm -hmm. clearly um and you know it, it's it's especially worse whenever only a small amount of people that are getting all the so money fucking funny where it's just only the bot people left and you just see them all, all pipping like, zero they're all be well, pipping 100 because they're trying to play multi-way versus uh -huh. each other right, right. so now they're all all in every like all in all in all in yeah, all yeah. in there's a six-way squeezed bot right yeah, yeah, yeah it would be interesting yeah i mean it, it's frustrating because like i don't think people understand how how valuable of a service what these guys are doing uh is and you know largely it's on matt and patrick and pads to kind of be the representative like you know matt is the the american reg who climbed from small stakes to nosebleeds mm -hmm. and he's kind of that face i used to read his um uh, forum posts on right once yeah and, and you know the trajectory is like very well documented and very clear like he's a voice worth listening to mm -hmm. pads is that same version only the mtt uh pathway right no, obviously not american but same kind of thing like you can go all the way back to like 2012 and you'll find pads post on two plus two when he was kind of just getting started now he's kind of the face of what high stakes mtts looks like online and then patrick is 
uh, I guess I didn't do a proper job of introducing him. But for those who don't know, Patrick is the younger brother of Nick Howard, um, both of which have been heavily involved in mass data analysis. But Patrick really went the route of being like the specialist when it comes to data analysis, right? Uh, he has a team of engineers. They comb through all this stuff and they're able to pull out information that the the casual just is never going to be privy to. The service that these guys provide, simply being the face of a much larger operation of high stakes regs that are cleaning up their environment and ensuring that they are not being cheated for large sums, which is important when you're playing nosebleeds, obviously. But it's also really the only realm that you're able to do this because it's only a few hundred people. So when a new account shows up, everybody wants to know who it is. They get to the bottom of it relatively quickly. What's the probability of it being cheated? Are there any sus hands? They share all this stuff with each other. The information passing is it's so rapid. A smaller community. Yeah. You can actually, you know, police that little bubble of an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that you can't once you start to go to scale. So when we're talking about these... Uh, you know, large field MTTs, you're talking about the mid stakes online cash uh, environments, you're talking tens of thousands of, of potential accounts. Yeah. And all you can do is find the outliers and try to do something about it. And these guys are spending their hard earned time doing that for no compensation, right? Mm -hmm. The only compensation is that they still get to compete in an environment that they grew up on and they wholeheartedly believe is important to the poker system as a whole. Like this should used to be. How much of it? How much of it were the bots just being bad, right? Because wasn't a big know. part of Ignition was, being great the fact that like it was splashy and multi-way and people punted? Not not necessarily the multi-way part. I mm. mean, people were just games are just sick, really man. bad. Yeah, it was great. Because like if I saw that hand history, I would just think like, oh, these guys are whales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at a, there was a certain point when it started to feel not so great, and yeah. I was like, am I getting worse? <laughs> I was like I, I must be. Well. Just yeah. Trying to find something else to do. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. So uh, I think, I think the problem is that I don't want to be, I don't want to be the voice of anti online, yeah. and these guys definitely don't want to be the voice of anti online. The whole reason they're doing this is to keep online safe and flourishing, mm -hmm. right? Right. So I do think it's important to kind of. Uh, I thought that was a very, op a nice message of hope. Like we can take ignition back right mm -hmm. right uh especially if it's only a few people I yeah mean, what's what's troubling though is that because of the anonymous aspect of it i'm not sure how you organize the troops to suss out yeah. the cheaters yeah that's that's the part that it's a bit of a disconnect for me i'm not really sure and maybe they're basically just like pleading with ignition at this point saying like look we need you guys to cooperate right otherwise we're never going to get to the bottom of this right it makes me wonder, like, the fact that they're so silent on it. Like, are they just profiting enough uh, from the rake of these bots that right. they are not incentivized to fix it? Like, I don't know. If you ignore it, it goes away. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, that's kind of not totally false. Yeah. Uh, without amplifying this message for these guys, without getting this out to a more widespread audience, people will just continue to deposit. Yeah, and then eventually, if it's all bots, I mean, they're still collecting the rake. Right. So uh, technically, like a bunch of break-even bots would be good for them because it's and like, good for the bots. Yeah, it's it's they make it's a big blind. Yeah, they make a big blind per hundred in rake back or a blind and a half in rake back, something like that. The mm -hmm. site makes. A blind, blind and a half in They're rake? They're going to play 2-5 and talking about their bots while their bots are running. That's wild. <laughs> That's so wild. Yeah, he was like really blatant about it. And I was like, I was like, oh my God. Like, I didn't know people were so casual about this. Like, yeah. yeah. He was just like, yeah, I run bots on Ignition. I was like, <laughs> clutch, clutch pearls. <laughs> yeah. Oh my, my word. Oh my word. <laughs> How dare yeah. you? I'm like, I'm like oh, eavesdropping and like on the other <laughs> side of the table like, what? Um, yeah, so I mean, hopefully we see some sort of response. Uh, I, I would also say personally, like, I think the ACR response has been largely underwhelming. Um, you know, I know that behind the scenes, they're, they're trying to move the needle. And I know Matt kind of uh, outlined that a bit. But, you know, this first wave of refunds seems to be kind of a non-event. Uh, nobody really claimed that they got a lot of money back. And usually you're going to hear that kind of stuff. If a high stakes guy, you know, gets a $25,000 refund, he's going to say, hey, good job out there. Thank you. I, I appreciate it, right? But we didn't hear any of that from anyone. 
Um, so my my hesitation in giving them too many kudos is that they're just you know refunding like fractions of a penny on the dollar. Maybe uh, it's a slow process. I be. mean, at least they are, at least they are like responding though. The fact that ignition is just like crickets is kind of insane yeah well i don't think the ignition thing's been pushed as far as we push the acr bot issue yeah. right because but even like still like acr has had a presence like on the on twitter and stuff like yeah they're reachable yeah yeah like, i don't know who like landon was the only ever ignition rep i've ever known yeah yeah, and I mean, he really got hung out to dry there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they made him promote slots, broke. and then they short. They, yeah. they, they, then they just didn't pay him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they just wow. they bro shilling and uh, yeah, and then said fuck you, you yeah. get stiffed, that's and some, we're closing your account. That's yeah. some fucked up shit, man. They gonna let him do you like that? You shouldn't. I, I've been saying like for months. I was like, fucking leverage your platform. Like that's yeah. fucked up. I would I would get the rest of your money off your account. Pay the first. man his yeah. money. I feel like yeah. you gotta unlock that bad boy. yeah i should do that yeah you should i do didn't that. know that was in, within your power i thought that they were withholding that too no 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 it was just uh the account from a security check standpoint was locked because it was in vegas it was a vegas account but it's like hey like i made this account this is literally an account you guys made yeah right. <laughs> or you yeah right. or me i'm too. an ambassador remember landon if you don't want to do anything i'll be your bounty hunter for 10 percent. okay <laughs> now we're talking okay, cut me in i'll be in there let's right. go everybody wants in everyone wants a piece of the pie <laughs> i want a piece of the pie guapa's ready to put ignition in the muck baby that's Just right fucking bury him uh speaking of in the muck like uh like sashimi wanted uh people to get the, <laughs> the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. that's you know, 50 percent guapo you better get on that shit and then follows up by the way don't do anything illegal <laughs> I, well that's you gotta cover your ass yeah I, I was there that day it was a very strange scene uh she was very upset but it was it's a weird thing because we've talked about this but you're kind of damned if you do damned if you don't obviously you should never leave a purse on a chair yeah that's just asking for it it's too easy but also it's like kind of scary to take it with you to the bathroom. You know, it's like you get brick up at the head. That's it. But yeah. the difference is, is that they need to brick you upside the head you get to steal up. it in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. It's a little more of a barrier. Right. Than, you know, just, I guess this guy just it. literally walked past her chair and just like snagged it. And oh. you know, when you're sashimi, you don't exactly keep a low profile. So yeah. you gotta be a little bit more, a little bit more cautious, you know? People might think that, hey, maybe there's some chips in there. Fanny packs are great. Fanny packs are great. They're coming back. I mean, they've not for dudes. Back. Not for dudes. No, they've been back for dudes. No, only They're if you're the rock. All the guys wear, you know, at WSOP around their chest. That's different. That's yeah. not a fanny pack. It's yeah, a cross it body bag. It's the fanny pack. <laughs> it's not no, a it's fanny a, pack. It's, it's cross thing. body bag. It's the same thing. Okay, no, well, cross body bag, fanny pack, wear it differently, wear it the same. Yeah. How many of those guys would you make out with? I don't know, maybe 5%. Okay. But that, but I, but that's like <laughs> They're the outliers. in general. Like I, I actually 5% is pretty high. Like I I think there's maybe like Oh, so we're into the fanny pack. 1% of people at WSOP so, that so I you're would saying, consider making out. You're with. saying the yeah. fanny packs are actually an edge. <laughs> no, she's saying five, They separate you from the people. Out of an edge if you want to keep your money. Yeah. Out of all the people she would make out with Five uh, percent are wearing the fanny. Yeah, but I, I, th I rescind. That's a bit high. Like five okay. percent. But it's a lot. five. It's five percent of like two percent. Yeah. There's like three people, maybe five per percent of them. That I'm right. Like, eh. We're saying five percent of them. Yeah. Of all the people the, that 5 are eligible, five percent of them are wearing fanny packs. Right. Yeah. They're all euros. And uh, Conrad. And Conrad. I don't know. Honestly, I, I don't have a fanny pack. I'm married. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the no I'm taken now. <laughs> Uh, this just in, I'm naming my new puppy Sven. <laughs> oh my god. You I'm should. not naming it Sven. Oh, Sven would have been great. I like Harper. I like Gender Sven. Neutral. Sven's better than Pip. <laughs> Finn Pip. is best. I mean, we'll, we'll, grow, to, we'll grow on I do Pip. like Finn. Landon and I are going to call the, the dog it's Harper, and, and that's going to be the dog the is going to have multiple names. The dog's going to learn it's not gonna know, It's not going to know what its I name is. I have to is. tell you, uh, there are no two people less qualified to name an animal in this room than you and Landon. What do you mean? Just... We yes. come up with the best stuff. We're good with names. No. But yeah, we're, yeah, we're cool zoomers. and cooking. We're cool, mm -hmm. cooking, and creative. Yeah, yeah. triple C. Yeah, C, C, C. C, C, C. Consistent. Mm. Let's get to the muck walker. <laughs> All right, we're back in the muck. Burke? Yep. This is your specialty. Okay. Deep stack cash, oh, baby. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look at all that money. <laughs> Look at all that money. We're Ooh. 560 big blinds effective <laughs> here at the two five game. Uh, our submission is from Spoder22. And uh so they are pretty deep. We got to open in the um under the gun two, I believe, nine-handed game to 20. We're playing two five. 
We have the King of Hearts, the King of Clubs. We go ahead and three bet from the hijack and folds back around to the original opener. We, we three bet to 70 and he, we're met with a four bet to 215. Okay. And, it's getting scary. Right. We decided to just scary. call. Scary. Right. We decided to just up, call. Bro. So You're deep, king, man. Right. We're deep. Oh. But we got kings. Guapa's petrified right now. Uh, <laughs> Guapo is shitting himself. <laughs> and uh, so we get a flop of nine of diamonds, six of hearts, deuce of hearts. And now the four better checks. Interesting. Interesting it is. So we decide to bet 200 into three, into about 430, 440. Okay. We're met with a call. Yep. And uh, the turn is going to be the four of spades. Fun. Right? Checked again. Uh huh. And we're going to go ahead and bet again. 75%. Nope. We went smaller. We okay, went like small. about 40%. RFC. Yeah, RFC. with uh, 350. Blunder. 350 into four, eight, or four, 840. And we're met with another call. Sure. The board pairs uh, six of diamonds on the river. Wonderful. Right. Now, and, how do we get it all? Well, check. And, uh, yeah, exactly. How do we get it all? Oh, we bet. Blunder. Oh, yeah. And now we bet, now we bet like quarter pot, which is like 450. You do a little 50. IP block. Oh, you yeah. get to 1,500. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so we're scared? met with a click to 1,000. Okay. This is where the hand history oh. ends. Um, oh. So we don't we don't really know exactly what happened. What? I'm assuming <laughs> that. Well, I don't think it's important. I mean, like. Oh, it is because I would I consider a jam. <laughs> right, right. Well, I'm saying it's it's not important what actually happened. What's important is how you should have played the hand throughout okay. and what you should be doing right, in okay. this spot. So, so, uh, so let me just give you um, uh, uh, Spoder's uh, thoughts here. He said. Um, so he said the villain villain is a fishier fishier player. Sure. And uh, said definitely went for some custom sizing since he's fishy. Probably not theory approved. Uh, and then he said, "Is there a 500 big blind solver?" And I said, "Well, yeah, I, yeah, yes. It's just it's just Wizard SBR. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a day I can do it." He said, "But bombing every street is just an overplay, in my opinion." Okay. Whoa. Well. Well. Right. Let's talk about why you're in the muck. Mm -hmm. Number one, using words like overplay. And you have kings. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's first, let's talk about the word overplay. Let's break it down. Uh, let's break it down a bit. What, what, is break it, break the, it down. what would be the opposite of overplay? Underplay. Okay, so trapping, I guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're so happy about some, that, some, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> underplay, underplay. Me, I know. Gold star. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <laughs> see how good she is with names. Right. Yeah. So so <laughs> underplaying slash trapping is barely qualified as something we would do in the game. Like you just you check for the purpose of value. You bet for the purpose of value. You bet for the purpose of bluff, mm -hmm. equity denial, all these so things, right? So what I think he means by overplay I know is, what he means. Okay, well, go on. for the audience or for whatever, for me. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks I, for himself. I, I, I want to know if this is what I'm thinking, okay. what you think he thinks is. Um, is that he means like essentially playing a 1100 big blind pot with one pair. Okay, so, so I, that, I think extrapolating... But that happens all the time. I, right, right. But I mean, like... Does it? Well, it should. It could. Uh, it when, could. You, when you're that deep, yeah. it could. I think if you expand upon that thought, it's... The, the, the portion of that phrase you're leaving off is with just kings. Right. So I think what he's implying is that... Like if, if he had aces, it's fine. Or just more so if he gets it all in. Yes. Yes, because once you get four bet, you assume that the top of the other range is aces. But more so... Once uh, you play this 1100 big blind pot or whatever it may be, um, there isn't worse that can call off. But that's not the way a three street game works, right? We arrive at the flop with an SPR of five. So being all in by the river is not very difficult. We never even have to bet pot. If we wanted to go three on the flop, I think it's gonna be something like 55% pot. So we can go like half, half, half and be all in by the end or 60, 60, 60 and be all in by the end, right? So it doesn't require these massive sizings, right? So he goes just under half on flop and then uh, 2E on the turn is B80. Do we want to go bigger on flop? Yes, of yeah. course. <laughs> uh, but, but that's neither here nor Who's there. The three? The, this is the, yeah, I think so. The, the flop size, I think, is the least of the mistakes. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, like furthering this thought process of overplaying or underplaying, whatever, uh, overplaying, um, it goes all the way back to preflop, right? It's... This contradiction of saying this guy is a fishy player, a.k.a. he has too many hands 
in every aggressive node or every node period, whether it's aggressive or calling. And then B, I can't five bet because he only has aces, right? Because that doesn't make sense. If he's a fishy player who has way too many hands, you always will five bet kings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. But maybe, maybe also he might be thinking he's super wide and I don't want to five bet and lose him. How could you lose him if it goes... 215 and you five bet to 480 right there isn't any hand that suddenly is just like well this was good enough to four bet but i can't continue yeah i well, mean sure he should in, have folds at least but in like, the custom range right you think right. if the four bet range is probably gonna it's be probably tighter, too linear yeah it's probably right? too good anyways and this yeah. is kind of why you want to have a polar four bet range is right because if you get flicked or whatever you have some folds that that's the big thing right it's like if he folds off of what he four bet then it's either going to be a hand like ace x which is good that you're denying the equity to or it's gonna be a hand like i don't i don't know something random six yeah. four suited yeah you know whatever just like something nonsensical that you probably weren't going to stack anyway right like sure maybe he could go off but the fact that he started by checking nine six three makes me think that he probably isn't a blaster because mm -hmm. this is definitely a board that you don't suddenly shift into check call mode on yeah right this but is like a East king would right um, depends on the range. I mean, yeah. when we, when we I get think, to river, then it's never. It just I like, mean, on flop. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, you still have ace queen suited in position that you can get value from. Uh, yeah. It's a tricky board. Like, yeah, you're going to play some checks for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not implying that, like, this is a range board by any stretch. Uh -huh. But, you know, if it's you're a. You're going to see, like, a, a crazy guy go off. On yeah, it. if, if it's a traditional four bet pot, like, you're not going to see bet 25% here. You're going to have a big bet and a check. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. like, you know, those big bets are going to come through. Uh -huh. Usually, whenever you see, like, check call, check call, it's like, oh, he has way too much middle. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just, like, playing middle as middle. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Which is, like, jacks, tenths, queens. Pairs, nine, eight, yeah. seven, eight, who knows? Like, you know, just way too many hands, so to speak. Even hands like maybe ace five, ace four that he decided to like check call to turn draw. Uh, it's tough to get in the mind of a maniac, <laughs> you know? I'm not, I'm not one to sit here and try to pretend like I can think the way. You are a maniac. Well, I'm a calculated, uh, I'm the worst kind of maniac. Just pretend it's you playing one too. Right, like I'm a serial killer. Uh, these guys. All right, let's okay. not go that far. <laughs> Jesus. Well, you know. I mean, I'm a legend. <laughs> serial killers. <laughs> serial killers are very calculated and precise. You know, they have their next target already lined up. They already have the the uh, clues that they're going to lead you're the an police. Assassin. That's right. You know, Welcome I'm a true crime. <laughs> right. I am so out you're, here. You're a sociopath. Correct. Right. That's correct. Gotcha. Now these guys, they're they're too random, right? Uh -huh. They're just psychotic. They're the guys mm -hmm. that get caught. Right. Right. They're, they're yeah. They're unaware of how crazy they. Yeah. Yeah, they're the random guys who start DMing you and then 10,000 messages later send you a butthole. It's just like it didn't, it, it wasn't supposed to go this it way. Wasn't, okay, but it just Greg, happened. Yeah. yeah, it just happens. You know, here you are in the 9,000 message. Sudden we're, in like, a, we're in a courtroom. And, <laughs> and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Butthole finally made it to the end of Muck segment. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you know, you can't predict, you can't predict uh, the way that this is going to play out because uh -huh. they don't know. It right. just starts with one message and then snowball. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. You know, you shoot your shot. So uh, I, <laughs> Way to put it. I'm not trying to get in the mind of somebody that would qualify as being uncalculated yeah. is the point that I'm trying to I mean, arrive at. He didn't at. say fishier. He didn't say like absolute crazy. Person. Find me somebody that you've labeled as fishier Ever. that has a thought in their brain. Name one. Okay. I'll wait. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> you just There's nobody you call a fish that you're like, but he studies. You know? right. <laughs> right. It's like, hey, he's looked at ranges. Yeah. It's like, yeah. no, he's a fish because he's just clicking buttons uh -huh. and like he's a right. victim to his emotions. But there's degrees of fish. Of yeah, fishing, sure. There's right? people who call it all off. There's people who punt it all off. Yeah. There's people who, you know, fold way too much. Yeah, but I'm saying there's some people who are just, you know, absolute crazy people who just like go nuts all the time. And yeah. there's people who just kind of slowly lose it. Cause totally agree. Yeah. Regardless, once you get the fish label attached, you want to five bet kings. First and foremost, That's period. Yeah. Lower the SPR. Try to play it all in pot. I right. don't care how deep you are. Right. 10,000 big blinds, 1,000 right. big blinds. It doesn't matter. If you can continue to slowly put money in the middle, that's a good event. Yeah. You know? And it's a very important event because even if you're 10,000 big blinds deep and you play an eight bet pot, well, Kings should probably be a small portion of that as long as the money's going in slowly. It's mm -hmm. different if by the time you get to the eighth bet, you're like 6x... 6x raising the last bet size, right? Because now you are funneling to where they yeah. don't have anything but the top. Yeah. Uh, so in this instance, okay, we play trap. That's fine too. We'll have aces and kings trapping some of the time. We get a dream board of 963. Why is this a dream board? 
Six deuce, but yeah. Okay, six deuce, deuce. Sorry. It doesn't really it's even matter. Right. <laughs> but but why why is this a dream board? Nine six deuce two tone. Because I shouldn't have many. Because you can stack so queens yeah, and jacks. Stack, oh, all and, yeah. pairs. We, yeah. we dominate a large chunk of the hands that he would do this with value. Yeah. But more specifically, he also flops a lot of like medium equity, right? Outside of that. Because he might have hands like 10 9 suited mm -hmm. some of the time. He might have hands like 8 7 suited some of the time. Maybe he has hands like 8s or 7s. Maybe 5 4. Perhaps 5-4 of hearts. We also have a heart. This is a really great event for kings. There's almost no turn cards that we're like particularly concerned with, especially if we start to get money in the middle quickly, mm -hmm. right? If we shrink that SPR to where all in is threatened by turn or river, depending on what our methodology is here, now we just don't care about the runout. And ace is like the only bad card. Yeah. Because a lot of his floats are going to be ace X with a backdoor. Right. right? And ace king with the ace of hearts. Ace king of diamonds. Yeah, and like the ace of hearts comes, it's still okay. Exactly. Right? Not flush Precisely. It's like, what ace does he have now? Yeah. You have to find like random diamonds that choose a passive line. Mm -hmm. Right? Just isn't going to be there very often. So obviously, I think that the custom sizing, I think it's cope to say that I was doing this because he's fishy. And instead, I think it was more so, I don't want to play an all-in pot I'm here. emotionally hedging. Yeah. I'm afraid to get check jammed on here. I'm afraid that if we play an all-in pot, it's only aces. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that I'm being trapped, right? Rather than just seeing what it is. And here is where, this is where solver work really, really cleans up the thought process for people who don't study. Once you start to see what happens when people check, as opposed to, like, when they pass on the aggressive option. When you see how much that range morphs into a range you don't need to be afraid of, yeah, fire, then you fire. just get to take the top and say, I don't give a shit. If yeah. you trap me, you trap me. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, if it happens, like that hand's not going to happen very often right. that way right. anyway. So. Like you can't trap me that often because I don't have the top of my range that often. So you're just foregoing all the value of your good hands mm -hmm. by playing check. Mm -hmm. And you're not incentivized to do that. So now when you do check, what I recognize is I have a really big target to shoot at when I'm at the top. Yeah. Right? So I pull out and I just go for it. And to me, that's the biggest principle to take away here. He tried to play a three street game that resulted in non all in with a hand that is worth three streets to be all in. And then he got met with resistance and it just led to utter confusion, which it kind of should. Because now when a guy lays you like, I don't know, six to one on the end or seven to one on the end or whatever the case may be. A lot to one. Yeah, it's probably hard to find worse value and or bluffs, yeah. but like, you know, fucking pay. We can't fall. Yeah. yeah, you've done this to yourself, man. You got to just pay. You yeah. bet third pot on the end. That's a no-no. Yeah, he's probably just like backing the sizing with some weird click. Yeah, well, he could he could literally just have queens thinking like, well, he would have re he would have five bet me with aces or kings, so my hand is good here and I'm just going to get value from jacks or tens. And honestly, not that not no, that bad of an well. idea. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Pretty exactly. reasonable. Right. So if you ever fold here, you're just torching. Torching cuz yeah. you have no calls. Yes. Right. That's the big thing. You have yeah. no calls. No right. six that you could ever possess in a right. three bet call range yeah. would go small small small. Right. Right, right? it's just non-existent. So Let's see what the young Sim Lord over here has to say. Uh, what, do we have to say? What, what can the wizard teach us here, Landon? Let's, mm -hmm. let's just, let's not play custom fish ranges. Let's just see what it does in theory no and, pruned. and roll with it. <laughs> Go big or never fold. Yeah, because well, here's, like, here's the issue with call it the custom Sim ranges <laughs> is like custom Sim ranges has like low frequency 6.5, 7.6, 8.7. The Fantastic Four. Small pairs. Four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're in there a little bit. Well, the Invisible Woman didn't make it. Mr. Uh, Fantastic didn't make it actually. Oh. Uh, Oh. Yeah, Mr. Fantastic is out. Wow, Mr. Fantastic hey, is I out. I like Mr. Fantastic. Yeah, Mr. F is pretty cool. Not fantastic enough. Yeah, not fantastic enough. Anyways, but like, these aren't custom, right? This is what this it, is legit. The this custom, is what our theory the custom is the like. one I made okay. over here. Okay, uh, fine, fine. So there's like some suited paint. There's some Asex wheels. There's some Asex coverage middle. hands, if you will. Well, yeah, you need to have these hands for boards like this. You have some equity that's not just over pairs. Okay, let's and, roll and high cards. Right. So as we can see, flop is going to be a big better check. You do want to check sometimes to protect the range, like kings you're going to want to check. Aces sometimes, depending on the suits. And like, correct me if I'm wrong, but big bet is 3E? Uh, 68%? I don't... I can check. It looks like it. 
Looks like turn is also 68%. If you go bet and then you go to the E and go like that, you can find out right now. Those are tutorial. We, we do do a lot of wizard It's great. No, it's like really good. It is that's the best way Look to learn how me. to use <laughs> this stuff is just watch someone who's good at it use it. Yeah. Painting. I think you Painting. eliminated the check. An artist. No, just, oh, no. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. An artist. You're watching a master like at work. All right. So three year <laughs> check is the four betters uh, alternative. And we can see that his checking range here, though it is protected by some of the better hands, they're at a much lower frequency. It's a lot of his misses, the king queen suited. Uh, and just for clarity's sake, these Broadway board or these Broadway hands that are checking, I assume that they do not have a front door draw. Is that correct? When you look at the ace kings and stuff. Well, the king queen, the king jack. King queen, you're going to want something on the board. Yeah. If you have nothing on the board. So the clubs, the up. yeah, the clubs and the spades, they're doing a lot of checking. King queen, king jack, king ten. Uh, I assume you'll see the same out of the ace axes. Why, yeah. why are queens checking so much? Well, because you run into kings and aces sometimes, yeah. I imagine. Yes. So you're kind of scared. You're setting up a three street Block strategy. Is Queens is going to be more of a two street. Two street hand. Yeah. A little bit scared. A little fear. A Jacks too. Fear, I assume. Fear Jacks. Jacks need a little bit more protection, but it's probably going to go bet check. Yeah, with Jacks, Jacks. You're betting with the Jack of Hearts mostly, just because you have a flush if you get called. Sometimes you can make a flush draw. But the other one's kind of scared. Uh, tens need protection and value, and you also have extra equity with three to a straight. Right. Mm -hmm. Like even yeah. though tens is a worse hand than Jacks, you can. Turn some more things and potentially win with a, a four liner where you can't with jacks. All right, what's the imposition response then when it faces check? I imagine we're going to bet a pretty high frequency here. Uh, half and half, and you mostly go small okay. because you're targeting like the king queen of clubs, you're targeting the king ten, you're targeting things like that. Okay. And like the ace x whiffs for out of position that can't just There's eat it off. Right. Exactly. So like they have really good hands that checked, like the, pr the protected traps, and then they have like. Absolute nothing. So okay, so probably going to go smaller on flop, and then I imagine look for more of a polarizing strategy on the turn. Yeah, because now you've... Well, on the flop, if, you, if we think about it logically, and we go small, and we fold out all their garbage, when right. they call, they probably have something decent. Yeah, so you just So small bet doesn't really help anymore. Right. So just give it the small size and then call. Yeah, so they get to raise a lot, and like sometimes you want to raise when you have kings of the heart, you can make a flush. And you have like aces sometimes, and then you have, uh, you have your bluffs being like ace eights that you check because you have three to a straight, three to a flush, mm -hmm. um, and then like you're only using uh, your backdoor draws with the ace wheels because once again you have three to a straight, three to a flush. Sometimes you have four to a flush. Well, it looks like it's raising the flush draws also. Yeah, like ace four diamonds. Front door, back front door, yeah, yeah. back door. Like if you have a draw, in, like yes, yes, yes. Uh, awesome. With enough flush draw, you raise, get it in, and with the back door, if you get jammed on, you're just like, just kidding, I was lying. Yeah, I, was, I was just... Yeah. yeah pretending is nice. Just kidding. <laughs> and the King, Queen of Diamonds is a nice one, because you can clean up some ace highs that can potentially see bet stab and then fold, like ace, king. Yep. So when you turn a king, you can win, and if you turn a queen, you get ace, queen to fold, which is nice, and then yep. you can win. Makes sense. So bet call, turn four of spades... Yeah, so like turn for hijack, we see here is going to be pot or check. Some um, no frequency jams, but mostly just big better check. And I assume that that is 2e at this point. Dun, 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 dun. I can check. <coughs> dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, I like the music. Yeah, I get, I get like the music in the background. Dun, dun. It, might, it might be a little bit, 2e might be bigger. Nope, it's pot. It's like yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Um, so, so it's the, 98%. The, uh, the other gun, too, is just... Uh, pure checking the turn once they go for the check, yes. yeah. check yeah. call line no leads yeah. right. no leads because what why right right yeah. that That's, would be weird be like checking you're too convinced yeah. that would be weird that would not be cool that would be, or that would be very call. not cool he already cooking. broke flow once he doesn't want to break <laughs> flow again low <laughs> and like this is this is important to understand like when you're playing a four bet pot it doesn't so you know spr matters some but uh until you start to get into like double digit sprs you're just going to gravitate towards a polarized strat on the mm -hmm. turn which means a lot more geo sizing so the idea here where like turn weird hedge size is mostly like i have a good hand but i don't want to get stacks in the machine mildly agrees but instead of playing the weird size they two checks. street game it yeah. So yeah. like okay my hand's not worth three streets all the time so i'm going to check and bluff catch if he bets the river, and if he checks, I'm like I have the green light to go for a big bet again. I imagine mm -hmm. that's a little bit of fear, fearing aces, and then a lot, a bit of wanting to protect queens and jacks. Yeah, 
Right, you don't want to just be capped at queens or jacks whenever you check back turn. Right, because then there's still a chance that under the gun when they call pre has ace or call p flop has aces. Right, and if you look at the rest of your range that does a lot of checking, one of the big reasons why aces doesn't need to check back is because you have so much ace high. So when the river comes in ace, you're you already have good hands mm -hmm. that improve. You don't need to improve the top set. And you stack kings all the time. Correct. Where now, like, you have jacks and you bet again, you're just, like, you're getting some protection, which is worth something, but it's not worth enough. Very to little win. versus a condensed range like so this. when you get called, like you, you bet Jacks and Queens is mixing fold. You're probably doing something wrong. Yeah. 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 You're probably, you're probably, you're probably fucking up somewhere. Too thin. Yeah. Yeah. Cause now you're just condensing them to Queens plus and Ace King of Hearts. Right. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, well, that's not very good for us. So, uh, I guess, I guess in theory, we can just look at the check back line and now the river is. Well, like, no, I, I think we should just. You want to look at pot? Yeah, because he ribbed at river with pot and a half anyway. It's not, it's not terrible. No, it's not. Oh. Note they play no jams because their range can't really support it. Right. And they can just run into aces too much. That, that chops pretty. Uh, six of diamonds, right? Yep. I imagine we'll see a lot of checking here. So, like, not really. Lead, lead's not real. Lead is, lead is scam. Uh, so, no, don't worry about that part. It's just aces that trapped. And now we only play check or jam on the end. And now oh, it kings, actually does can, check down. Kings, you can check back because you're like you're making queens indifferent on the turn. Right. So now like they're mostly going to be folding the river, and mm -hmm. you want to polarize to having aces or not aces. And like sure, sometimes <laughs> you can have like a set of like sixes and nines, but like the idea being. Well, I think that, that's what I think that's probably also what's driving the kings check back is that you don't have enough bluffs to support, and you do have to shove nines and sixes at this point which you have some frequency of. Which you should have some frequency of. Right, so like pre. if you eliminated all the other value hands outside of aces, then kings I think would get in. And like also you're jamming, so when you jam kings, you make kings indifferent because you're trying to say you have aces. Again, though, that's a still... byproduct of the sets being in our range too. Yeah, it just depends on... Honestly, the, the check back is just going to be very dependent on how much do they have aces. Right. And the answer is probably not that much. Right. Because they probably would have seen about the flop because the flush draws there and they can get scared. Yep. And they probably would have check raised flop if they check to be sneaky mm -hmm. because they can get value from the over. If they have aces with the ace of hearts, they right. check more. So the machine is like, you know what? I have aces some of the time here. I don't need to worry about it because we're playing this game so many times. But then when you get aces playing live poker, it's like the greatest feeling of all time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can't contain yourself to play a, oh, let me check and then check again. And yeah. Again. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. Totally so agree. in to practice, I would imagine that we'd want to go for max value with kings and you just hope that they have aces there. hope that they have queens and like they're allowed to fold queens sometimes. Like the machine just lets the lets it be like the mix between blue and green. So like if they fold queens and you don't get paid by queens, that's not your problem. But like if they never fold queens, now you have a big issue. Yeah, right. So like you could have ace king. Let's like, oh, let's let's, king. let's go back to let's go back to turn and start customing. Okay. Uh, just, just for the just randoms. With, with the theory ranges, like I made some, I made yeah. some ranges that look like live poker ranges potentially, like very top linear, like top sure, left. Sure, sure, whatever you want to do. Uh, can use the theory ranges. That's fine. Okay, so like let's just eliminate what is supposed to happen size wise Give and it, go like, with B40. what. Yeah. Just eliminate the jam too, because we don't care about alternative strategies. We're just playing it as it was played. Yeah. Now kings is gonna bet because we have kings. Uh, still still check mix, some, but yeah, uh, depending on the suit. And then aces, you can you can check back sometimes, but like not really. You'd rather check back other hands. Like ace queen of diamonds is a bad hand to bet. You have some over cards where you can maybe win, and also you block the diamonds that you want for the under the gun player to have that continues on flop now folds because the backdoor draw didn't come in. So you want to check back those hands. Ace jack of hearts, you can still bet because you have overs and a flush draw. That's a good hand. And then you can bluff with. Uh, these aren't really bluffs, I guess. Like seven six isn't really a bluff. It's kind of like a, a merge. Yeah. You know, yeah, it probably folds to a jam. I mean, well, it, does, he's, it he's definitely not folds. Gonna, to yes, jam. it's gonna fold to a jam, but you're getting a lot of value from making like ace highs indifferent, like ace kings. I guess mad. you don't really face raise again. You don't face he's raise. He's so tight that like you just don't face raise. So right. it's it's more of a you kind of have merge the, when they check. You have like not the more polar range because you're both polar, but the value is so condensed to. Well, you do have the more polar range because you have more bluffs. Yeah, we should have more bluffs, I yeah. imagine. Like, we have some of this low cards yeah, yeah, yeah. and the ace yeah. wheels where they just have a lot of the aces and kings right. and, like, stuff in the top left, like this. Okay, so he responds to a call, now river four. Or six, rather. No leads, no shock. And now we play checker jam again. 
Okay, so now give him the custom non-jam size of 30%. And for what it's worth, we can see that 60% wasn't in there, so 30 is for sure not going to be a thing, but let's see what happens when we force it. But like 75 bigs. So we got to force it. Now you just bet kings because like Pure, kings obviously. You get called. Yeah, like you can check queens linear. though because your value targets are everything that's above you. Too thin, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's not good. That makes sense. You don't want to be... I think that's a really important principle to take away from this is that queens is a very clear two street hand. Whether you check back flop, check back turn, or check back river, you're going to check a street with queens. Yeah, do mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Do something that's not put money in the middle. Uh, So <laughs> he actually <laughs> plays no raise versus this size. Let's see what happens if you just force. <laughs> right, so now we're... Dun, 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 force dun, dun, a click. Dun, dun. We're... we're in the weeds. We're, yeah. we're, 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 we're far away from home. <laughs> we are far All right, away from home. <laughs> we're not in Kansas anymore. Uh, so he goes 450 and then this guy raises to 1,000. So he raises to 200 bigs. Yeah. I don't know how we're going to make this happen without forcing it. I mean, you might just have to paint some raises. But if you paint raises, then it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's just click the button. You know, let's just let's click the button and find out. Let's click the button. Yeah, so the selected line yeah, is that's rarely a good used. So yeah, you can see King's still mostly King, calling. Yeah, King's is like, I mean, if you look at the funny EVs, it's just like negative one, four, five, six, 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 nine, four, four. <laughs> because you broke it. Yeah, it's right. you broke broken. it in my You broke it in my solve. Um, right. But idea being you can actually just flat aces because like you have nines and sixes to jam with, with like full houses. And seven, six, yeah. six, five. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So like, I, I think that gives us the answer that we're looking for here. Like, is what, that, what are we doing? Uh, you know, for what it's worth to begin with, the, the quote unquote, cut, uh, sorry, the quote unquote theoretical range that we're giving the four better here is probably wider than what you even consider a fishy player's four yeah. bet range to be, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? It had suited broadways. It had suited aces. It had some of the fantastic four. Uh, it had pocket pairs well below tens, which you're almost never going to see in your environment. So no. If we had painted ranges, I don't even think we would have gotten as wide as what a theoretical range would do at this depth. So uh, I don't think now we suddenly need to be custom sizing throughout because what are we hoping to manipulate, mm -hmm. right? Like that's the big thing. When you choose to hedge and pick smaller sizes than what theory would actually want to, to do, what part of your range is benefiting from that? Certainly not your bluffs, right? Right, like your no. bluffs aren't doing better by by betting cheaper. Value isn't even. How is your value improving? Because yeah. the exact same hands that are supposed to call for third pot are supposed to call for full pot, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So like we still narrow the range the exact same way. The only thing that I could think of, I guess, in some sort of capacity, is maybe he makes an error and check raises queens on the end, and now we get to call profitably. See. Yeah. Versus it's a hand that's too thin. Yeah, but you know, people lose sight of, of of range construction. They don't think about how often in position has aces and kings here. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think we're pretty confident that out of position doesn't really have aces very often. Probably not even kings. And if they right. do, they should have stacked this and they didn't. So that's right. Them. So that's their problem. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, what was the user's name? Uh, Spoder twenty two. Spoder twenty two. You're in the muck, my friend. Uh, I think we need to re reshift your mindset a little bit. When you face a four bet, you can't just automatically gravitate towards, oh, that's aces. Because now whenever you face passive action later, you forget about all the hands that you can stack. And that's a really important <laughs> part of playing deep stack like, no limit. Oh, shit, he has aces. Oh, wait, he checked. He's, he can still have aces, though. Now he's right. trapping. Yeah, now he's trapping. Now he's raising, and now but he I has aces. Bet. But I have mm -hmm. to bet. Right. I mean, it's right in the sense of your hand's not worth a ton to the bet-bet jam line. But it doesn't mean you choose weird sizes to try to fit what your hand wants to do. Yeah, for what it's worth, for me personally, like the way that I get around my hand not being worth three is I just play two E strat. So even though we're supposed to quarter pot in position, um, I just play big bet check because flop? yeah, because number one, I'm I'm way wider. <laughs> I mean, right? that's a so, huge bet, but sure. Uh, two E's like. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Massive. Never mind. It was like over five SPR, right? You'd probably, yeah. you'd probably go yeah, yeah. three E. No, I would or, probably I would or, probably like range bet and then two E. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I would just, it's it's face equity, you know? Yeah. You just get the value yeah. bet kings on the end. Sure. But what you would do is probably check the turn at some times. Some of the time. Oh, always... with a lot of my range. Maybe not with kings, but well, like, yeah. a lot of my range. Well, yeah. you probably yeah. just bucket by like betting kings and aces if you don't five bet pre because you're that deep. And then you're going to check queens, queens and, and jacks. jacks. Are either, uh, honestly, I'd probably check flop more than I should. 
with those types of hands. Well, you're not range betting flop and you're checking queens and jacks. No, well, I know. I, I, I misspoke. I, I just meant like I would choose the, the, the range bet yeah, size. Yeah. Right, right. Um, Through the smaller size. The smaller yeah. size is nice. Yeah. You accomplish a fair amount. A bit, but like you probably don't see that many checks. Well, the thing is, is that I do see a lot of checks, but people try to check raise me more. So I'm, I'm cognizant of that mm. and I have to kind of pivot my strategy a bit. So that's why I probably wouldn't range bet there. It's probably why I might B40 instead backs. of B25. Yeah. Um, so like just these little tweaks are a lot whenever you are a little bit more privy to your opponent's strategy. If you know they're capable of checking aces with the heart in order to check raise, then you're not exactly thrilled to start blasting off with jack 10 of diamonds. Yeah, it's kind of why playing against good players is tough because they yeah. kind of have all of the tricks in the bag where if you play people, they always bet their value and they always check when they kind of missed and they always see bet when they have some form of equity easier to play against yeah. that's the big thing about these spots yeah. right is that it's a four bet pot so ranges are relatively tight what you need to understand is coming from both positions you're pretty fixed in your strategy out of position gets to play a, a large bet size or a check in order to check raise some of the time mm -hmm. right and it's not that hard to pull the hands that are incentivized to do that like oh aces with a heart pretty easy check raise you know top set of nines pretty easy check raise i'll just build around those and then with the c-bet strategy it's like oh kings with a heart very easy c-bet you know what i mean queens with a heart very easy c-bet uh these over pairs without a heart very easy check to check call mm -hmm. things of that nature so you very logically can build out these ranges quickly and now if your opponent's not doing the same or correcting for your simple strategy then what happens is you capture a lot of EV in their errors. Yeah. So whenever the imposition guy who's too aggressive stabs all the fucking time, now all of a sudden your overpairs start to print because he has too many hands like 9-10 suited or 7-6 uh, suited or whatever, and you have too much equity to bet fold them, right? And you also have like the ability to have board coverage and scary turns, and now all of a sudden like you see imposition yeeting it off whenever quote-unquote scary cards like a 5 fall but they just have too many bluffs and not enough value. So like you happy call with over pairs. I think that that's really one of the most principal takeaways that you can have here. And again, like studying a solve really will help light up that portion of your, your brain that uh, kind of intuits these strategies. Once you start to see a check off of a polarized action, it's just like, okay, I'm a lot safer now to just go for it with the top of my range. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be the mindset. It can't be that... Uh, I didn't five bet kings because I'm afraid of running into aces. Oh, he checked. Now I get to start playing my kings a little bit more aggressively, but I still have to be wary of the fact that he might have aces. Yeah. It's like, once you decide to start playing kings aggressively, we don't care if he has aces. Yeah. Because like, it's fractional. It's going to be a, a percentage that that's going to happen yeah. and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it, get stacked. it works out mathematically. Right. right. Get fucking stacked that's in a 1200 big blind pot with kings. One time. Hey, the botter stacked me in a, like, many big, I don't know, just, 800 big boy. Yeah, he's a fucking botter. Of course, you knew what you had. No, I was. That was, I, actually told you, I told you about that one. It was when he called me with third pair or something. Wait, what, what were you doing? I, I vaguely blasted. remember this. I don't. Yeah. Know. I don't know. I had like eight seven. It was like a three bet pot. Okay. Um. It was like. It was like queen something. I don't know. Whatever. The turn paired the queen, and then you remember we were like. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, we were like, oh, if it came on the river instead, then yeah, this probably would have worked. But yeah. Also, I had been taunting him because he kept letting me bluff him. So it was just like a bad meta thing. Like, <laughs> bro, just has a five. Like, you never call. Like, I'm just gonna keep bluffing. He just has ace five suited and just like. No, he had he had. Oh, it was queen queen something six, and he had a six. Mm. Yeah. Okay. We, now he here had seven, we are, six. and we died. It kind of has yeah. to be one of those things where the fear or like the pain of losing or getting stacked is not worth the as much as the call it joy of stacking them yeah where like you play yeah. this pod versus king with kings see aces get stacked you're like i could have done something different mm -hmm. versus like the times when you do win the big pot PTSD. and they have queens mm -hmm. yeah, yeah you've just seen you don't want to i guess re-experience that pain you of, can't i could have checked you can't both win the maximum and lose the minimum at the same time yeah it's right. conflicting mindset you have to pick a lane Either you want to win the maximum with your good hands or you want to lose the minimum with your well, coolers. And the maximum route is scarier, but more profitable. So much more profitable, so, but so scary. It's scary. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's like when we, when I used to play online, like the graphs, you know, like I was just working with land and my graph went from, you know, it was very kind of like steady. And then it was like, 
but it was going up. It right. was going up more yeah. overall, but yeah. it was yeah. like you know a lot more emotion, a, a lot more emotional trauma in winning the maximum, but also a lot more money. Yes, in winning the maximum. Yeah. So you know you gotta you gotta choose your fighter. But you get numbed to Eventually. more, yeah. so that's right. better. Yeah. Yeah. Tortoise of the hair. Right. Uh-huh. Right? The tortoise is just, you know, going to have that steady, slow. Yeah. Hit. You want to be a nymph or a warrior, you know? <laughs> right. Are you going to be the little fairy that's casting spells on everybody and just, like, taking one magic point at <laughs> a time? That fun, kind of. Or are you going to be the warrior <laughs> that beheads <laughs> people and takes uh, all of their strength at once? Yeah. You know? Got to be a tank. Do you want to take a chip out of their castle or do you want the whole castle? Right. <laughs> you just want that thing to crumble. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. That's right. I like these analogies. <laughs> Somebody say crumble? <laughs> enough yeah Rudy did. <laughs> all right yesterday we asked you guys hungry ass dog please give me an example of something someone said to you that was so astonishingly stupid you can never forget it guapo says have we taught you nothing <laughs> uh, nice. i, like I don't think that was stupid i think that was sage advice actually it was astute uh nadav said was it astute oh that- never mind yes you're correct right <laughs> yeah uh nadav says has to be more rake is better that's great. Uh, Tyler Gunther says, I was thinking about jamming to see where I was at. <laughs> Player X. When in doubt, all in. Now, yeah. I can't read all of Efro's. He managed to highlight everything stupid that's happened in the poker community <laughs> over the last mm-hmm. 18 months. And I applaud oh him God. for this. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a short. So good. Just, just go down to where it says Joe Burrow will win more Super Bowls. I'm just going to read, all the, <laughs> I'm gonna read all the Only Friends affiliated ones and they all apply to Conrad. The fiddle is some sort of woodwind <laughs> instrument. It is. That is very stupid. <laughs> black licorice is so good. It is good. Also that's very stupid. So Who yes. likes black Black Lickers. Uh, oh, idiot. Nah, Let's see. Idiot. Joe Burrow will win or will go to more Super Bowls than Patrick Mahomes. It's coming, baby. Yeah, keep holding your breath for that one, coming. buddy. Hashtag Rick for Chief. Oh, man. Uh, and then finally, trapped him to the gills. I led so he would raise me. He fell for it, but he had a set. Very unlucky. Uh, thank you guys so much. I uh, got a couple plugs. I meant to do them at the top of the show and completely forgot. Uh-oh. Uh, new dates for the Dealer Academy. We've partnered with uh, RF Poker. For those of you who are unfamiliar, this is uh, Daniel Wyman's actually a part of this company, uh, as is um, Manit and a few others that have been to the Academy. They have uh, a new technology for RFID tables. Uh, it kind of automates everything it collects. Anyway, the point is they're based out of Atlanta and they've invited Jill Lopez, our uh, Poker Out Loud dealer to go host the dealing school in Atlanta. So if you're in the Atlanta area, March 21st to the 23rd, and you're interested in getting your uh, certificate in order to be able to deal this summer, um, not only will she give you all the chops with rules and procedures, shuffling, dealing technique, chip handling, payouts, customer service, table management, casino etiquette and professionalism, practice sessions, but most importantly, she will help you with job placement assistance at the end of the academy. So if you guys are interested in that, hit hashtag dealer in the chat or just head to academy.solveforwide.io. Also, quick reminder, we do have an academy coming up at the end of May. Cash Academy first, MTT Academy right before the WSOP. Seats are starting to fill up. Okay, let's go. Let's go fill them up. Uh, Cash is May 23rd to the 25th, I believe. Correct. And then the MTT Academy is the 27th? To the 30th. To the 30th. That was a four-day. Four-day Academy for the MTT. Get you guys all prepped for the WSOP. Matt Hunt will be leading the charge on that one. Again, academy.solvefory.io. The last... uh, Oh, yeah. Also, Poker Out Loud, uh, yesterday we released the season finale. That's right. Season finale, it's all up there. You can watch the entire season. We'll be uh, starting with On Second Thought very soon. And I think we'll be filming a new, uh, new season Maybe very soon Maybe there should be another post well. where people tag who they want to see. Okay, I'll put it out there. Okay, fine. I'll throw it out. Well, it never amounts to anything. <laughs> people get tagged. Nobody wants to do it. You know, tag we, them enough. You you know? We try to get Jeremy Becker. them enough. Uh, no, no, I, no J back? I had I had in the creator game, but not poker out loud. I had Landon yeah. hassling him. He doesn't want to give away his strategy oh, before the summer. I okay. understand. But uh, do you though? No. I don't get it. It's cash and the uh, the actual. First of all, it's not a heads up battle, so it's not. First like, of all, he can come in for the second half, and his episodes won't get released till after the summer. Oh, that's true too. Uh, that's also true. But I was gonna say the the episodes won't even be released until the World Series is underway. But more importantly, it's not a heads up bat. Doesn't matter if Landon knows 100% what JPEX's strategy is. Right. It doesn't change anything. 
Anyway. I think he means the rest of the Well, yeah. Community. I understand. Big, big Sulphur Y fans out there in the WSOP. Better be. Shout out to the WSOP. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow noon featuring Matt Hunt with another Wednesday episode of Strat Chat. Be sure to tune in then. Uh, also, I didn't say it before, but if you guys want to submit your own In the Muck segment, head to our Discord channel. You can ha- hit hashtag Discord in the chat beside you. Uh, we'll see you guys all tomorrow. Peace. Later. Peace.